Hey guys, welcome back to Phil Plays TCG. Today, I wanna to take a brief break from the gameplay videos that I've been uploading. Don't worry, those are still coming. There's actually gonna be another video uploaded tomorrow. Stay tuned for that one. That's actually a really fun match. Um, we're talking about Topku. And I know every YouTuber worth their salt and every content creator for this game is talking about the Topku controversy. But you know what? I got opinions. I would like to make them known and maybe I can give you a different viewpoint than the other ones. I've watched all the other ones. Uh, Asperia, Uniex, um, Stage Zero. Fantastic. I loved all of them. They all made wonderful, great points. Now, let's just run down the whole scenario here. Uh, last weekend we had, well, this weekend, last weekend, uh, two days ago, we had a huge amount of regional tournaments in North America and other countries. And the common denominator was that Topku reigned supreme in every single event. Like, I was, I will 100% admit, I was one of those people that said Green was overpowered in set one. And to be honest, I still believe Green was overpowered in set one. But honestly, not to the level that I feel like Topku is now entering set two. Uh, this was a leader introduced, of course, in set two. And the. The deck, in my opinion, is just too overtuned. I thought green as a whole was overtuned, and I still believe it is in set one, but it is crazy how the top color in set one has completely fallen off in set two. And now and now red has taken up that mantle, and red is just absolutely dominating this format. Uh, we're going to talk about it. Uh, so before we hop into it, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, typical YouTube stuff. I really would appreciate it. We just hit 1600 subs. Thank you so much for everyone uh, that has gotten me to this point. You guys are amazing. You're wonderful. Much love. Uh, going now into the video here. Uh, this is the first possible tier zero deck. Now, a lot of people are going to say, you know, well, their opinions are different when it comes to what defines a tier zero meta or tier zero deck, which is, uh, oh, if it's 60% of the of the population when it comes to a tournament base, or, oh, if it takes up uh, most of the top spots, or if the only deck that can beat it is itself. Now, really, at first glance, I think Topku meets all of those standards. Uh, at the uh, North Carolina Regional, it took up 87%. That's the number I've been seeing floated around a bunch. 87% of the player base was on top coup. So that checks off one. Two, top four, uh, the top 16, 14 decks were top coup. That's, that's number two. And finally... Out of all my playtesting, and from a lot of competitive player standpoint, the only deck that really has a shot of beating Top Coup is Top Coup. So that's three. That's all three check marks to for me to believe and to make the statement that I believe Top Coup is a tier zero deck. Now, feel free to let me know in the comments if you disagree, but a lot of top players have said going into this regional, all their practicing they did, um, they came to the conclusion that it was better just to play top coup instead of trying to figure out how to beat top coup with a different deck it was just easier so much easier to just play top coup and learn the mirror match because learning your mirror match is key when it comes to uh you know tier zero and mirror match decks mirror matches uh builds too wide of a board too fast and that is that is absolutely correct uh its ability is draw one uh, activate main once per turn Discard one, tap one energy, uh, play up to one battle card with 2,000, sorry, 20,000 power or less, and turn up power and its skills uh, and its special traits from your hand, uh, which most people know to play Kefla, which then Kefla's ability just free plays another card with a cost of three or less. So for one energy, you essentially build a board of three, uh, sorry, uh, build a, a board worth seven energy for one. That is incredibly busted. And it's something that is more, it feels more like it belongs in Dragon Ball Super Masters than in Fusion World. And hell, Masters had a problem where too many cards would free play other cards. And we've all learned that free playing or damn near, damn near free playing or like one energy plays are incredibly toxic and incredibly rough for a game's meta. And I don't know why they thought this was something they needed to bring in a set two leader 
it, it's just nutty. And we'll go into it a little more into the video. Um, it's able to clear boards incredibly quickly and with incredible ease. Uh, cards like your Gohan, uh, which minuses a 15k on swing. Uh, you have you're you're playing 25k bodies, which is you know super early on in the game uh, for for damn near cheap, a damn near free. It's just going to be incredibly easy to clear boards. Uh, there's a lot of other red cards I know I'm not thinking about right now, uh, but you, you, you've played red. Red's always done a really good job, a really great job of clearing boards for for ease, uh, for cheap, because of the negging of power. And I, while I still don't agree that negging a card uh, doesn't count as a skill, it counts as game mechanics. I, I really think they need to change that. It is, it's just something that is incredibly annoying because cards that say can't be KO'd by this, can't be KO'd by skills. Red can get around them. It's like red's the best at clearing boards hands down. Um, it's incredibly easy to pilot. The deck runs a very simple game plan. You go down to three as soon as you can, you know, three life because you need to awaken at three life. And which is super simple to do because red has so many self-awakeners. It's insane. Um, plus your opponent would have to swing into you to, in hopes of defeating you. So you have, you, you take life that way. That's a whole other thing. Um, the, and then once you get that, you just start free playing or for one play a bunch of cards that free play other cards and you just swing, 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 swing. It's a very easy strategy. I mean, red aggro decks typically are the easiest decks to play, and they typically do the best in early stages of the meta. N no argument there. Uh, and finally, it, the other thing is it incredibly it's ugh, it is an incredibly expensive deck to build right now because red SRs. Because you need to run a lot of red SRs from set two and set one. The set one SRs aren't as expensive now, but the set two ones. I did just the SRs for set two, and you're looking at easily easily over a hundred dollars about 120 dollars even more so for just the red srs in set two then you have of course the srs in set one and then uh all the rares and all this stuff that can easily go up to about like 100 easily over 150 bucks and for a lot of people that want to play you know a competitive deck that is a lot of money to spend um especially when everyone else is doing that uh, maybe 150 bucks isn't a lot to somebody, but to me, like, I don't really want to spend that much money on a deck. I'm hoping to keep it under 100 bucks uh, to the whole thing in general, but that's just me personally. But that's just a, that's a personal opinion. So, I want to compare this, because me and my buddy were talking about this yesterday. Um, I'm playing Zamasu. I love the leader. It's so much fun. I love the deck. It's my deck that I'm personally piloting, uh, well, I'm hoping to pilot, for the Peoria Regional. We'll see if that changes uh, because of the uh, top coup controversy. So let's compare these two leaders. Now, at first glance, I mean, I mean, top, like people automatically said like Zamasu was a bad leader. I don't think he is bad per se. He could have been better. And I feel like he is needlessly nerfed because it just feels like blue always has to play with a little bit of a handicap. Uh, red, well, sorry, let's just go over this real quick. So, top coup. Like I said, his ability is... Well, the, both of these leaders awaken at three. They're the only two leaders right now that awaken at three life instead of four. As far as I'm aware, I don't think there's any other leader that does that. Top coup draws one on attack. Zamasu doesn't draw one on attack. Goku is a 20k leader, while Zamasu is a 25k leader. Goku has the activate main once per turn, tap one and discard a card from hand to use its ability. Zamasu also has that same thing. Activate main, once per turn, tap one and discard one. The difference is Goku gets to play a four cost, sorry, a body with 20K power, which in most terms is lethal to awaken leaders. Zamasu gets to, uh, only if your life is a two or less, at the top card of your deck to your life. So very specific terms. Can't, you can't be at three and then um, ramp back up to four you have to be at two. While Goku, there is no life requirement. You can just play any 20K body that has the Tournament of Power tag in its special traits. There are a lot of cards that have Tournament of Power with a 20K base that have abilities that on play makes them stronger than 25, 20, so going to like a 25, 
or they get to free play another card that allows them to uh, just build a bigger board. Now, in comparison, one like they have a lot of things in common. You know, their ability stems from discard one, tap one. But you get so much more value out of the Goku one than you do the Zamasu. Because you ha you can't use his ability until you are damn near close to death anyway. And being at two life is incredibly scary going into Tapku. Because of the ability to free play a... Sorry, uh, play a double striker for one. And then bump that sucker up to like 90k. So, Zamasu going into the Tapku match can never be at two life. So, essentially his ability means nothing it's such a stupid comparison like, it, like the fact that both of these leaders have the same cost to use their abilities but one ability one ability is so much more uh, it's it just gives you so much more value and we're going to go over that with the next slide here oh sorry maybe in the next slide over uh these are the culprits basically that make red as like Tapku as ridiculously powerful as he is uh, the 4 cost 20k Kefla, uh, the 4 cost 20k Ribriant, and the 3 cost 25k Android 17. So Kefla, uh, you can play this for for, uh, for 1 off your leader ability since it is a 20k, which then allows you to free play Android 17, a 25k body. Kefla's ability, if your leader is awakened, this card gets 5k power, so immediately goes from 20k to 25k. You're not going to be able to play Kefla for less than four unless you're awakened anyway. So Kefla's always going to be a 25 because there's no way Inktopku is going to hard cast Kefla before it's awakened. It will never do. So it's essentially always a 25k. And then on play, draw one, then play up to one battle card with a cost of three or less and with tournament of power tag, aka Android 17. A 25k body for three. Its ability is... It's permanent as your leader with Universe 7 and its special traits gets 5k power. That is not on your turn. That is not on your opponent's turn. That is permanent. That is for both. So your leader is now a 25k leader, which matches the Zamasu leader. So basically for the one, disc, for the discard one and tap one, you get to play two 25k bodies that one of them turns your leader into a 25, so you can match Zamasu, and then Keflet draws you a card. So that card you had to discard to use Goku's ability is back. You essentially pay nothing. You've essentially paid one energy to play two 25k bodies, and then also buffs your leader to 25. So now you can swing lethal into Zamasu. Which his whole thing of being a 25k body means you're supposed to have to waste more resources or to swing into him. At least that's how Broly was done. But with Red, you don't they don't have to do that anymore. Everything now swings in like you you play three two bodies that can swing in lethal into him, and your leader can now swing lethal. It's Ugh, it's nutty. And then 17 being able to have the ability uh, permanent if your leader's awakened, which it always will be when 17 comes out. This card cannot be KO'd by the skills of your opponent's battle cards. So it also has another, like, it has a buff on there that doesn't need to have, doesn't need to be there. So blue is the only one that can, like, rightfully get rid of this. 17 will only be, will always uh, stay on the board unless it's KO'd in battle. But then the other issue is the Double Strike uh, Ribrian. Uh, double Strikers in set one were always so, like, they're always your late game drops. They're always at least five energy to play. And they had some great on play ability. And then they swing big. With this option, you now have a like, 20k double striker that you can uh, you can essentially pay. Sorry, play for one. I'm getting a little worked up. I apologize. Uh, you play it for one. So if you get your opponent down to uh, down to two energy, sorry, two life. You play this as your, you know, free is your one uh, ability play of the turn off your leader ability. Uh, then you play Glimpse, which buffs it again. And then I believe Glimpse also lets you grab cards from your discard. So it's just you pummel your opponent with 25k swingers. And then once they get down to life, you play this 
buff it to all hell, and then you win. From a lot of people talking about playing and playing Topku and playing into Topku, this was most of their win conditions, was playing Ribrian into Glimpse and just going all in. Like, they don't run the, the uh, five drop double strike uh, Goku anymore because this is so much better value. Sure, it's, it's 15k weaker, but who cares when you can just glimpse and just re do ridiculous amounts of damage. So these three, in my opinion, are the issues when it comes to uh, Topku's success. And like I said, the move. You use uh, Goku's ability, you play Ke uh, Kefla, which plays 17. You're generating seven energy worth of cards for one energy. And your leader is now a 25k body, which means 25, 25, 25. Your opponent, if they're awakened, or hell, if they're not even awakened, uh, they're going to be awakened soon because if you can awaken before your opponent, which you're playing Taku, more than likely you are going to be awakened first, you're going to swing 25, 25, 25. Your opponent has to give up at least 15k combo power each time uh, you attack if they want to not just lose three life in that single turn. Absolutely insane. And then they now, even if awakened, you're now, they're now facing down a 25k leader, which 25k leaders always lose some type of benefit. They they don't draw on their backside, and like that's it. That's a big thing. They can't draw on their backside, but Goku does. So even though he's a 25k leader off of 17's ability, he still gets to keep drawing. He gets, still gets to keep uh, building resources. And the fact that 17 is not easy to get rid of is going to be a big problem unless you're playing blue. Uh, or red, because red can also get rid of this. But because it is a 25k body, they have to put in a bit more energy and resources to get rid of it. Uh, other moves, of course, are uh, when you use Goku's ability to play Kefla. So you discard a card, you draw one off Kefla, but then you free play the other Kefla, which is the uncommon card from set two, which then draws you another card if your leader is awakened. Which, of course, your leader is always going to be awakened when you get this out. So not only are you going even you're not going negative with being able to do this because like as you're, you're paying a cost you're now removing that cost because you redraw that card with kefla you then draw another card with the other kefla so now you're plus one you're you're, you're netting one it's uh it's gross i don't like this <laughs> like oh hold on oh no it's still recording okay Something's going on with my stuff here, uh, but yeah, it's you're you're paying a cost, but yet you're being able to negate the cost and benefiting off of it. What this does with Kefla, oh, sorry, not Kefla, with Goku, with Topku being as prevalent as he is and how powerful he is in this format, green essentially cannot compete. Green is way too slow of a color, and red will just steamroll it. It's crazy how impressive green was in you know set one, and now it's gone. It's incredibly, it's, it's insane how much the meta has shifted. We then have uh, yellow cannot compete because yellow is also a little bit of a slower build. Yellow, I do think actually can hold its own, but I don't think it has the power to secure the win. It can tap a lot of things down, but red's ability to just keep playing more and more cards for five energy, you can play a Kefla to play another card, use leader ability to play a Kefla, play another card. So even if your opponent taps down some cards on your opponent's board, like they're gonna keep playing more and more. So you can't keep all of them down and eventually yellow will just get rushed. Blue has a slight chance because of cards like Sinister Sickle, which put in amazing work, being able to bottom, draw, uh, bottom deck two, four cost. You then have cards like Absolute Lightning, you have the Vegitos that bounce cards, but the fact that you're bouncing cards back to hand is not great because, oh no, they're gonna play those cards again and get those on play abilities. It's, on play abilities are awful. Blue needed to just bottom deck everything because this is what happens. Like I get it, people are gonna say that would be too overpowered, but bouncing cards to hand, especially against red, is not that good. Like, it's really detrimental. And of course, you're going to be mirror matching all day. So you're just going to see Goku, like, Topku, 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 Topku. No one likes mirror matches. But at that point, it's just whoever's the better player wins or whoever gets to go second because that energy marker just puts in, just, it just makes all the difference, you know? 
Talk, uh, possible solutions. Ban the leader or errata the leader? I think, honestly, they're not going to ban him. Do I think he could be banned later on? Absolutely. Because the way this leader is set up, in the future, if they ever release more Tournament of Power archetype cards that have a 20k base power, they're going to be easy, easy add-ins for Goku. Uh, which means they can't be too powerful. Or else they're just going to make the uh, broken deck even more broken. Because I can't believe we got this in set 2. This is, to my opinion, like a set 5 leader released in set 2. Uh, we could errata the leader, which a lot of people are talking about, which is uh, it's a tap 1 discard. You can make it so it lowers the cost of your next tournament of power card you've played by 2. I think that was Asperia's. Uh, I think it was either Spiria or Uni, Uni-X. I'm sorry, I can't remember who suggested that. But basically, discarding a card makes the next card you play cost two less. So they are, of course, going to have to pay two to play Kefla, which may throw off their balance a little bit or their tempo a little bit. I don't see them banning the card like this leader yet because it just released. I can see them banning it if it is too much of an issue, maybe in set three. Maybe, but this is Bandai we're talking about. I think it's more logical that a errata will happen. Uh, next, we have Kefla. I think Kefla is really is really the problem card here because we're in a bit of a conundrum. Uh, if we ban Kefla, sure, Topku takes a big hit, but red other red leaders like Starterku, Beerus, and Universe 7, which I guess I don't think Universe 7 runs this anyway, uh, will lose access on a really good card. If you had to pay four every time you played this card, it wouldn't be as bad. It's the fact that Goku can play it for one that is the problem. So I think a more a logical uh, solution would be to errata Kefla to be a 25k leader. Uh, sorry, 25k body. I think that is the biggest problem with this card is it was not like this ability, the permit that gives your gives her that 5k boost if your leader is awakened is the is a loophole that they created to allow her to be free played or sorry, played for one off of the top two leader. That should never have been allowed. This card should never have been allowed to be played for one. It just it it breaks the game in my opinion. This card needs to be a 25k body at all times so this it it's already a 25k so this would not affect the card in any way shape or form um, because the permanent isn't on your turn or isn't on your opponent's turn it's just permanent it's just on either player's turn so it's already essentially considered a 25k you might as well just make it a 25k so one so goku won't be able to play for one but other red leaders will have access to it it still costs four. It's still going to be a 25k body, and it's still going to be allow. It's going to allow you to draw one and play a tournament of power card with a cost of three. I think that is a great solution. We don't have to touch the leader. It just hey, like that permanent is now a permanent in your hand too. It's a 25k. I think that is a great option. Sure, Topku is going to lose a big momentum swing, but you know what? I it needs to. Like we need to address this situation. Because the reality is this. Do you really just want to keep seeing this large chunk? Because, like, look at this. Not e Okay. Not counting Vegeta, 15 of the top 16 were red. It's gross. This needs to be addressed. And I really hope Bandai does the right thing here, which I know Ban it's Bandai. They're not going to... I really hope this gets addressed before my my regional in Peoria next month, because if it doesn't, I like they need to address this now, because if they get closer to the next regional and then they decide to, hey, we're eroding this, we're changing this, we're banning this, whatever the case may be. And people have already built their decks. They've spent all the money on it. There's going to be a huge fit. I get that. But reality is people are not people are going to leave the game because they were unhappy with how set one was handled. Uh, they're unhappy with the fact that set two product is damn near impossible to find. And now you have this busted leader that it's just easier to play this than it is to play against it. They don't want to see this leader like nine times out of 10 at a regional. They're going to stop playing. And then of course you think of the digital client. It's the same thing. People are 
This is going to be easy to build on the client because it doesn't require any secret rares, like other decks, like who, for example, does require a lot of their secret rares. So this will be easy to build on the client. And then people are just gonna run rampant, climb the ladder with this deck. And it's just something needs to be done. I don't know what exactly needs to be done, but something needs to be done soon because this is not healthy for the game and this will not make people want to keep playing this game. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for checking out the video and staying to the very end. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on Top Coup at the very uh, in the comments down below. If you think you have a better option for what to do, whether it's banning a card or rotting a card, let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.